but I thought it was good that we, um, Sarah and I both thought it was good that we got together just to kind of update on everyone on a few things. Um, just, uh, you, I don't want to read this because I've done it so many times, but um, we are using this, we are meeting remotely uh, using remote participation. Um, and uh, this meeting is being recorded. I think you probably all just got the notification of that. So, um, and I'm the first item on the agenda is public comment, which we always ask people to provide if they have anything they would like to bring up that's not already on the agenda. And it looks like we don't have any members of the public here, Sarah, was that correct? There are no other people wanting to get in? Okay. Um, so the chair support, I just have a couple of items um, that I wanted to share with folks. Um, the first is that, um, as you all know, I'm the representative from this commission to the Community Preservation Committee. Um, we did have a spring round of applications, uh, two of which were in the category of historic preservation. Um, and we have, uh, and then a third that was in the category of housing. Um, the committee has recommended two of those to the city council for funding. Um, one of them is the historic Northampton project, which I believe Lori's going to be, um, did you, you knew that, right? Yeah, of course. I like the excitement though. It's good. Um, Lori's going to be talking to us probably a little bit about that tonight, or if she's not, she can also, she can bring us up to date, but it's essentially a project to finish the barn which is going to serve as a terrific community space um, in so many ways. It's very exciting. So um, that's great. And there was a third application that was historic preservation related. I'm going to bring that up at the end of the meeting because um, it's progress and future relies a little bit on this commission. And I'll go over with you that with you um, at the end. Um, the second item that I wanted to just bring up um, is that Craig Telepina, who's been on this commission for many, many years, I, as long as I have, um, probably a lot longer, um, has opted not to renew his um, membership. And Craig, I know that you have a lot of um, activities going on. You maybe want to talk about those a little bit, um, besides lots of offers that you're writing. You're muted. I've got a number of things going on. I just, um, DOT and so other, other state agencies have been drilling me for a year to get a report done about what would the 100 mile rail trail mean to the state and the communities along the way. And I was dragging my heels on it, but I finally um, wrote an RFP. It's gone out to about 20 firms we have funding in place, high, high five figure funding, believe it or not, raised in about 20 minutes from, from three foundations, ready to go. The RFP went out a couple of weeks ago. I just got some feedback this, this afternoon from a firm in Philadelphia. This will be modeled after what happened in New York probably eight years ago when they proved that the state of New York was getting $250 million a year from one trail. And, and that has doubled since the uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so we think that this is uh... You're frozen, Craig. So anyway, I will just, um, while Craig is frozen, before he comes back, I just wanted to continue by saying that, um, as you probably all know, Craig does feel- The mile um, built out mark. You, you, uh, you froze a little bit there, yep, Craig, but, we didn't hear the end of it, but- But so, that's yeah. the big thing. That's the big thing that's going on that's gonna take up my time. Plus I have a big conference going up this summer. So I need to, craft out some time. So. Well, we thank you um, for all your years of service to the commission and to the city. Um, it's been a great asset to us all and we'll miss you a lot. Um, Sarah has already reached out to the Real Estate Association and they are looking into a replacement, um, which of course will be hard to do because you've got big shoes. Great, thank you. 
Um, okay. We have two sets of minutes um, that we were, were given to us um, to review and approve. Uh, they are from 2021. And if any of you remember these conversations that we had um, back in then, I had to really think twice about uh, some of the things that we talked about, especially um, in relationship to a Blessed Sacrament Church. So um, I'm happy to take a motion to approve both of these at once. I believe we can do that, Sarah. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll Let's move. We approve the minutes for the two uh, meetings. I'll second. Okay, great. Um, was there any discussion on anyone from what people reviewed? Okay, if not, then we should take a roll call vote. All right. Um, Jonathan? Yeah. Steve? Yes. Craig? Craig's still frozen. He's already left us. <laughs> uh, and Martha? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is Lori, who has come here, Lori Sanders, who has come here to uh, give us an update on what's going on with Historic Northampton. It's great that you're um, able to do that. Thank you. You're muted, Lori. <laughs> um. Well, thank you all so much for uh, your support of the of our projects. And I just thought it would be nice to give you an update because it's been a while. Um, so do I have the capacity, Sarah, to share a screen? Uh, can you give me one second? Yeah, you should be able to now. OK, let's see. Can you tell us who has just joined us? Is this a question of who's on the phone? I believe yeah. it is, yes. It's Deborah Berkovitz from Bay State. Okay, okay thanks, Deborah. Um, well, I just thought I, I, it, this won't take very long, but I just thought I'd give you an update. Martha's shared some of our most exciting news, but. Um, I, I can't recall when the last time was that um, I came before the commission, but um, since since last December um, or since last fall, for those of you who haven't been to the Shepherd Barn, at that point we had uh, all the it, we have been really fortunate with CPA funding and some Massachusetts Cultural Council funding. We had technical assistance, so we were able to identify all the interior elements that were not of uh, structural importance as well as um, in terms of creating the space that we need for the future of the barn, which has three real important elements. One, it will act as a ancillary gallery for us. It'll also be a space where we can have workshops and community gatherings. I'm, I'm excited about things like where you could do hands-on activities that is dying or messing around with clay or whatever it happens to be, things that we can't do right now in the in the main gallery, but that could happen here. And then the last part, as as Martha mentioned, and I, I this is really, I guess it's it's very exciting. Uh, it will be serve as a small performance space for um, for activities that have a connection to history. So it's not going to be like another bishop's lounge, another performance venue for whatever kind of uh, music or event, but we've already started talking to Patrick Gavridge about having plays in place, um, plays that are related and connected not only to Northampton, but to actually the this home lot. So um, in the neighborhood, um, so many people are really excited. So that's that's really a nice piece. So anyway, we you, here you can see some of the interior uh, demo work that was being done over the winter. Uh, again, thanks to some funding through another CPA grant, David Dempsey came with his wife and they cleaned and um, uh, improved many of the signs, did some uh, basic restoration work to prevent flaking and other things. 
we also sent two signs out uh, for professional conservation. And here, I hope you can see my, my screen is such where I've got to kind of change change where you all are. But you can see the, the shepherd sign originally as it was and how just how gorgeous it looks with, with the gold leaf. Mm -hmm. um, so these signs, they're, they're still at the conservators uh, workshop in Arlington, but um, we'll be coming back soon. And then here's another sign that we had uh, sent to her. You can see these, there's the one on the left is the one that is before. And this Daily Hampshire Gazette sign, it's maybe not as obvious. You can see some of the changes in the, oh, yeah. in the um, gold leaf, but also there was structural improvements that needed to happen with the frame. So these are, these are the two signs that we had sent out for um, outside conser conservation. Um, we've also, in the end of March, the archeologists were here and I just was in touch with them. They did survey work, um, laid out lo plots inside the barn as well as on the exterior. And I would say, you know, it's one of those things where it's, it could be really exciting if they found something great. <laughs> But it's also exciting for me in some ways that uh, that they didn't, so that the project is just going to proceed um, and move forward this year. I just talked to them today. They expect to have all the final analysis for the the minimal amount of artifacts that they did find here. You know, it was mostly bits of glass or small pieces of ceramic, things um, things along those lines, nails. Uh, that had fallen through the floorboards, but um, so the analysis will be complete, and the and the report is expected at the end of next week. And at that point, it'll go to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. And once we get there, okay, then that's one of the um, important pieces for us to move forward with the actual uh, restoration work. The other piece is that we're continuing to move ahead with the the layout um, of the artifacts and working with the lighting designer uh, now so that when you go inside, the, the artifacts will be dramatically and beautifully lit as well as the interpretation panels. And we'll have some other kinds of, we're talking with the lighting designer who is Wade Clement, who some of you may know in the and the artifact, um, Mike Hankey is helping us with the layout of the of the artifacts. Um, there's some other really neat elements, the stories to tell about the barn in terms of its natural history and elements. Like there are places where two different styles where pigeons were allowed to come in and out, and we're not sure if that was simply so that people could have um, some extra food or. Uh, there were a lot of pigeon racers right in this area, and so it may have been um, actually people who kept pigeons pigeons for racing. But anyway, this gives you some sense of, of a kind of a more detailed of the of the layout, how some of the items will be hung, and then Mike has been helping us with real specific details in terms of the mounts, which um, as uh, Martha mentioned with the latest uh, CPA grant that was um, unanimously approved by the Community Preservation Committee, um, there's money in that, in that grant for the custom mounts that will be designed for each of these artifacts, as well as for the installation. So that is just a huge relief uh, for us in terms of you know, the, the, the detail that we'll be able to Provide. And it's just so exciting because so many of these signs have so much, I mean, the, the barn will tell 300 years of Northampton's history and so many of these artifacts have not been on display for years and years and years and years. And Agnoli Sign Company, which is still in business in Springfield, which is the, is the company that designed this WHMP sign way back when, they're working with us and they're going to... Um, re-illuminate it so it'll be yeah. functioning. Um, the other part is that um, this just shows you Alicia Spence, who's this internationally 
known timber framer and classic for our area. She lives in Florence. Um, the image on the, on the side, the little image, just shows you uh, kind of the flooring style that we'll be using. We've um, gotten some local hemlock from um, David Lashway up in Williamsburg that's drawing. It'll be one inch wide planks that we will um, have a double layer. So that'll be really good for dancing and, and for acoustics too. And we've also, in the, in the last few years, unfortunately, some trees have fallen naturally and others um, we had taken down because they were declining. But this last week, we had two hemlocks that one fell on its own and the other was really seriously leaning. And we took that one down last year and we had it, them all that, where you can see the fellow in the red shirt, that's Jay Clark out of um, Conway, South Deerfield. And uh, he milled it all into two by sixes so that we can use that either some parts for floor joists or more than likely for a new garden shed that will um, be of use to the Sprouts program from Bridge Street School as, as well as to us. We also had to take a black birch down um, in the back that was also declining, but was going to be um, very close to the new shed style addition. And I talked with an arborist who felt as if once the foundation went in, the, the roots would be so severely damaged that the tree then would really, really suffer. So we had that also taken down. David Cotton uh, took that down and donated all of the time for he and his crew. And then Jay came, the guy in the orange shirt, and he milled it. <clears throat> so um, I'm excited because some of the wood will be used for benches and other elements and, and other pieces. Hopefully um, local woodworkers will convert mm -hmm. into other beautiful pieces of functional art. Um, the last couple pieces that I just wanted to mention is here, here's our property survey. The lot that the barn is on is this one of the three that we own. Here's the property. And I, the piece here that I want to point out is just how close the barn is to the property line. Mm -hmm. And, um, at its closest point, it's one foot off and at the back corner, it's three feet off. And so we've been working with our neighbor and we'll be having a meeting to make sure that everybody is kind of completely clear on what's gonna happen and to tr really try to minimize any um, disruption for his tenants and, and for him. Um, but because of that, um, so here you can see the uh, shed style addition that's going on the back that will be in keeping with that vernacular. And then the L on the front where you see um, this, this is the modern current image. And this is an older image down here at the bottom before uh, the 1990s when they put in the window and such. And so we're gonna actually um, keep, keep this one element of the, of the top here, this, that's the only thing that's kind of really authentic still. And then um, when, they, when they were doing the interior demolition work, this space, uh, when it was constructed in the late 1800s or early 1900s, it was, just, it was just a tool shed, shed for carriages, shed then ultimately for a vehicle, mm -hmm. so nothing fancy. And um, when the quote unquote repair work was done, in the 1990s, it was really just as you can see here in the uh, roof line, just kind of really scabbed together. And then over here on this side, the sill has totally 100% rot, rotted out. You, that's that's the air over there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. be, because this this building was added on, it's not tied into the barn what we will do is we will take this down entirely and um, rebuild it using a timber frame working. Alicia is so excited to work with volunteers and teach them timber framing. And then we will really have a, a barn raising 
um, and this is the space that is going to be great for outdoor events, whether they're events that Historic Northampton hosts or the community, um, because in this space there'll be two ADA bathrooms and a little kitchenette and a water fountain outside here. So we'll be able to have that, um, there'll be a, a, a sliding door back here that we can lock, so this space could be open if there was a public event. Um, and but the artifacts inside the main barn would be secure. So anyway, that's really going to be an asset selfishly to Historic Northampton, but much more broadly to the community, any community uh, partner that has a workshop or other kind of event outside on the grounds or, or inside will be able to um, benefit from that. And thanks to Betty, she knows the woman who is in charge of all the federal buildings for ADA compliance. So Jan has donated her time and helped us to ensure that all of this is totally 100% ADA compliant. Right. And the last piece is this, um, the shed style addition that I wanted to mention, which is gonna be on the back. And uh, we have a, a filing a, a ZBA meeting next week because it turns out that it's um, that because we're so tight to the property line, uh, based on the zoning in our area, we're supposed to be five feet off the property line, and this part of the of the shed, actually, it's under four square feet, right in here, uh, doesn't comply. So um, we have a ZBA finding next week, and and. We can't change it because there's a sliding door here, and if we shorten this side, the sliding door doesn't <laughs> doesn't fit. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, since this corner, this portion, it's the parking lot of the school, and then our other neighbor here has a eight foot uh, wooden fence. That hopefully, I mean, there will be no impact to the community in spite of that um, not meeting the setback. So that's that's the plan. Our hope is that all of this will begin, um, that all of these pieces will come together so that really by July 1 uh, we'll have the construction fence up. The last exciting piece is that so far we've raised more than $500,000. As Mar Martha mentioned, um, we just learned 173,000 uh, a week and a half ago in CPA funds, and the CPA has been uh, just uh, totally 100% critical um, for this project. Uh, but we also heard last Saturday, a week ago Saturday, uh, the Beverage Family Foundation awarded us 40,000, and we have um, one more grant outstanding from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, which we just heard today, um, that we will hear in the next two weeks. <laughs> and that one is for 137000 So if that one comes in, uh, it's great, because then we'll only be about, I don't know, $150,000 uh, short. But I'm very optimistic uh, that it'll all come together, because there's just, I don't know, people are, people are really excited about it. And I... Betty and I are excited about the programming and, you know, it'll be seasonal programming, but just what it will mean for downtown, for this sort of new idea we have of Paradise East, all of the cultural institutions on this side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, and as a small, really a small, unique venue, that'll be, um, I don't know, I, I guess I'm, I'm just so hopeful that uh, it'll have this lineup of programming that when people are checking into the Hotel Northampton in the summer, the, the staff there will say, oh, there's an event at the barn tonight. If you can, you know, if there's space, go. And so it really becomes kind of a thing that people people want to do, people that it gets a reputation as just something to do, um, whether you're a tourist or whether you're a local. So. That's that's it in a, as a quick update. And oh, I'll just mention one last thing. Um, I had a good conversation today because we're going to make this new garden shed that may 
if we can design it with like some other kind of pergola where Kent Hicks designed one where was able to have enough solar panels um, on it and and um, trying to become uh, net neutral and do our best as part of this decarbonization plan for the state of Massachusetts um, is a high priority for us. So I don't know, that was an exciting kind of new way of thinking about how we could get more solar um, on the property um, in a way that's compatible, so. Well, Lori, thank you so much. Um, does anyone have any questions for Lori? Um, I have a, a sort of question, I guess. I mean, this is all wonderful. How can we be, is there any specific way we can be helpful? Well, I'll call Apart you after I hear down. how much money we have to raise, Jonathan. <laughs> but I'll call you as a person rather than. <laughs> uh, nah, but as a, as a commission, no, I guess, I, I, you know, um, I don't think at this point I can think of anything in particular, but really, whenever you want to come down and, and see it firsthand, we'd love, we'd love to have you. Uh, we're going to have some open house events, and honestly, it would be just so wonderful if you all were there. Um, we'd to, love that. Yeah, uh, to, absolutely. Because I mean, you you know a lot about the history of this town, and and um, it'd just be great. Thank you. But Steve, if, if we apply for additional money, Jonathan, I will I will reach out to Sarah and and the commission to to write letters of support. I know those letters of support that you've written in the past have been really helpful. So thank you very very much for all of it. Steve or Craig, any questions for Lori? Well, for me, just great work as always. Yeah, thank you for the update. It's really interesting to hear about all these plans. It's exciting. So, Laura, you know that um, I often hold the Northampton, historic Northampton up as the highest standard in preservation. Um, I, you, you may know this or maybe not, maybe you don't. I do a lot of work with the Emily Dickinson Museum. I have for the past 20 years, and I think they're kind of, you know, they're, you're on par with them. And I just hope that the model that you followed, um, you can disseminate that information out there because I think there's a lot of need, just the standards that you've been adhering to. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on the agenda, but it's been great to see all the professionals that you've involved in just the really expert approach you've taken to preservation. And again, holding up and adhering to national standards is really important. It's meant a lot, I think, not only for your institution, but also the larger community. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. Uh, I credit, we have a really good staff and um, they come with a lot And great of directors. Leaders. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for giving me the time to give you a little update and I can't wait to have you all come down and help we're gonna take all of the all of the soil that we remove. We're gonna sift all of that, even though it's you know, and see what else we find. And um, we'll keep you posted so that you can help with the timber frame uh, construction and uh, the the barn raising. There's the fundraising and there's the barn raising, and I want you to participate in all of it. <laughs> Thank you, all and right. thanks for coming. Okay. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. You so too. Much. Good night. Okay, thank you, Lori. Um, the next on the agenda is an update on the historic preservation plan. And um, I've enlisted Sarah's help with that. Um, but so I won't say any more. You can fill everybody in. Sure. Uh, so I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, but we Sarah just got back from a two week vacation, by the way. So not only is she bronze, but she's still in a readjustment phase. So yes, it was a good day, though. Uh, we had a lot of work done, which was great. Um, so we received five responses to the request for proposals for the preservation plan. Uh, and with the subcommittee's assistance, we've engaged Barrett Planning Group. It was a, everybody agreed that they put together a, a great proposal and it's something that will make sense for the city. Um, so we're, uh, Wayne's on vacation now, um, Carolyn is as well. So we'll be doing an initial kickoff probably next week or the week after, and then I'll have some additional meeting dates and kickoff information for the Historic Commission after that. Okay, great. Um, 
you know, a little bit about Barrett planning, just so everybody knows, um, I, I actually work with them or have worked with them. And uh, so I did have to recuse myself from the discussion, but for the most part, um, but it's, um, Barrett is a, it is a, a company that does municipal planning mostly. And um, they've also teamed with a preservation consultant, a woman named Kathy Brumer, who's based, I think in Needham, she has a lot of experience um, in historic preservation, again, working at the municipal level. Um, so I think it's a great combination. Um, Judy has a lot of um, experience with zoning, um, housing issues. She's actually a, a, the leading housing uh, planning expert in the state. So I think she's a great combination. Um, she with Kathy are a great combination for this project. So we're very lucky. All right, um, so I, I had a couple things I wanted to talk about that were not on the agenda. Um, first of all, I just wanted to also mention the third project, well, the, I mentioned the Historic Northampton funding. Um, the second project that we funded, and I think it's important for everyone to know about this because this kind of is a historic building, um, the old nursing home that's on the corner of Prospect and Bridge. Is everyone familiar? I know Craig is familiar with that. Steve and Jonathan may not be. This is a building, a large, very large building on nine, nine acres, as I recall. Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, the proposal um, that came in was to redevelop that into uh, a whole different series, uh, different types of apartments for uh, mostly affordable housing. And the building itself is very sound, even though um, it's been uh, vacant for 10 years and has have a lot had a lot of vandalism. Uh, so this is a really exciting, um, we all felt in the commission or committee, a really exciting way of preserving a building that's intact um, on a site that's, you know, really in some ways um, perfect for housing of all different types. It's in a neighborhood, it's close to schools, it's on public transportation line. Um, and I think one of the greatest things about the project is that the neighborhood was really in favor of this. Um, there was not, at least at our meetings, public opposition to creating affordable housing units in an established neighborhood and across the street from the Lathrop community. Um, so there was a lot of applause and excitement for making this happen, and that was, that was really great. So that's something to um, keep an eye out on the development of that. That building has been so sad for so many years. Um, and it is historic because I think it was built in the 60s, right, Sarah? Is it the 60s? That's right. Maybe the 70s. Yeah. I think it's just 50 years old. Just that's 50 years old. Okay. Um, okay. And then the other agenda item that I did not um, have listed um, is, and I mentioned earlier, is the third application to the CBC we got this spring was for the St. John Cantius Church on Holly Street. Um, and as you probably all know, I think we probably talked about this before briefly, that um, there was a, it was purchased by a developer, um, they wanted to tear the building down. Um, the Central Business Architecture Committee that oversees what goes on on that property, um, it had a lot of deliberations about whether they should issue a demolition permit. Um, and there was a lot of um, support in the local community for retaining the building uh, because it has so much cultural significance to the Polish heritage, heritage of Northampton. So here's the reason I have this on the agenda. We did not make a decision. And the reason for that is because um, we didn't feel that we had enough information from the developer about what they're actually proposing to do to this building as a historic preservation effort. Um, and I'm coming to you and we're, we will have follow up to this in a, another meeting to kind of help me work through the decision because I have to represent the historical commission on this. Um, they did not appear, the developer did not appear in front of us, um, but we do have their application. They're um, wanting to convert it into um, market rate apartments. And 
we as a city are being asked to support um, the external work on the building. So repointing, redoing the roof, and also putting in some new windows to make it obviously livable as a, um, and to meet the, the Massachusetts building code for uh, residential units. Um, so we've asked them to, the CPC has asked them to hire a preservation consultant to prepare a report on the work that they're proposing that we will then, as a commission, us will review. And then I would like to have a discussion with all of you at that point about your, you know, your sense of it. What's your analysis? Do you think this meets U.S. Secretary of the Interior standards? So I can then go back to the CPC that um, we are going to meet again in, you know, a few months to make a final decision about this. So that, that, that's a preview. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Sarah knows more about this, obviously, than is, I do. Is there, a time, is there a time constraint at all? I mean, do we have, um, to, do we have to discuss it by a certain date, or, or is that open? Sarah, do you want to talk about the time frame? Sure. Um, so to avoid a potential borrowing scenario, we discussed with the O'Connell, the applicant, delaying this until fiscal year 2023. So we won't be going to city council for final approval, assuming that final approval is recommended by the CPC until late August or early September. And the rest of the timeline really depends on when the applicant is able to complete the historic structures report. Okay, um, thank you. So pr probably next meeting or the meeting in June. Yeah. Um, I, I did provide Sarah with some information to pass on to the, um, the developer about what his direct structures reports are, what the um, U.S. Secretary of the Interior standards are, along with a few names of in, uh, individuals or firms who could help them. Um, but I think for the purposes of this, we, we probably don't need a full-blown historic structures report, but something that really addresses the issue at hand, which is this ex these exterior um, mod modifications to the building. Um, and I'll just you know, say I'm mostly concerned about the windows because they're going to be punching into the uh, exterior of the building, and that work is not really reversible. So... Um, We'll have to, but again, I'm looking forward to all of you helping me through this decision because it's a hard one. Um, so, and I'm just re representing us, that's it. Any, any questions about it or? Okay. Um, I do see that, um, Deborah, are you in attendance um, because you would like to raise something, a question with us, or just monitoring the meeting? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, definitely not monitoring. Appreciative for your, of your service. Um, Alex Jared, had, who's my counselor, had asked me to attend because uh, he knows that this is our love. And um, and I didn't know how brief the, re the report out on the on the plan, the preservation plan is really what I'm interested in and in figuring out, you know, we do have people in our neighborhood, I think, who are so dismayed about what's going on and would like to understand what that process is gonna look like. Okay. And then I just wanna say from my perspective as a citizen, which I'm sure you all discussed, we just lost, you know, maybe a 250 year old building on Market Street in the last week that I took pictures of coming down yet again, you know, the basement was left and we lost the Hannah Randall boarding house, uh, you know, unexpectedly, same thing on the corner of Maple and Nonotuck, um, you know, in the last couple months. And I'm just feeling really dismayed about the, the lack of protections and the priority on, you know, getting very expensive housing in place of older buildings. So I, I, I don't know what role I can play in this because I, I'm super crazy busy, but I, I, yeah, I want to be, I want to be a citizen speaking up on behalf of the buildings and then hoping that this plan is actually used in a way consistently across the city, because I feel like the sustainability plan is actually not being um, adhered to by the planning board decisions and the planning department decisions, you know, they're, they're inconsistent with what the sustainability plan is. And I'm, concerned that there's going to be this whole process 
for the historic preservation plan and then other arms of the city are going to come forward and continue to let the kind of you know large scale loss of our architectural legacy so i'm kind of here at the beginning of the process but i would love to understand maybe not taking everybody's time but um i think i'd reached out to sarah before about it to understand what the plan is for the plan and then how we might get regular citizens involved early on not just in like a focus group context down the road but really thinking about you know what is the purpose of this and and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and how we can do some proactive advocacy work so that it's not something that just ends up on a shelf yeah so deborah one of the um up early components of the plan is um developing a public engagement process and I think any ideas that you have about that um, would be really, really helpful. Now, the consultants will be doing this, um, but they're very experienced with that. Um, and, but, but again, they're going to need help um, in the community to get people involved. And of course, the more we have involved, the better. Um, so, you know, ways of connecting with people, um, you know, the, the demographic that is out there that often doesn't participate, what's the best way to get to them? Um, how, you know, what kind of venue do we want? Do we, does everything need to be remote? Um, you know, all of those kinds of things would be really helpful to know upfront. Um, and so I would just voice that information, you know, by email to Sarah and um, Steve, who is also here, is on the subcommittee with me. So we'll be working with the planning department on that. Mm -hmm. But I'm really glad you're bringing this up because it's important. Yeah. And I think, you know, people don't even know that this is going to happen. So I think mm -hmm. even like as much advance notice about this is this is being planned. But I think I can say that I, I've seen now, having gotten involved with a couple different neighborhoods that have been dealing with the stuff that we have, that I think there's um, tremendous um, feeling of disenfranchisement and discouragement. And so I think that there are, you know, people that might have had some motivation or feeling hopeless, myself included. So if I'm feeling hopeless, that's not a good sign. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, really understanding that going in and how to, um, how to talk about how this is going to be used and really have the different arms of the government talk about itself. You know, how is the planning board going to use it? How's the planning department going to use it? How is the tree, you know, how are the tree wardens going to be thinking about what a streetscape looks like? And, um, you know, I think these are the things that really are concerning to people is how do we have a more holistic approach that's also accountable to each other? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And I just want to say, you know, I'm, I know that I'm in these meetings in a kind of pissy way sometimes because I'm so frustrated, but I really appreciate everybody's service always with the city. I, you know, mm -hmm. I know it's a lot of um, just personal sacrifice. I work for the state. I know working in bureaucracies and I uh, it just really do appreciate it. And I'm glad that there are other people who are, you know, wanting us to not lose things that we can't ever get back here. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, I, we all appreciate that very much. And also appreciate your contributions that you make at the meetings. They're always valuable. So um, we'll certainly pass that information on to the consultants and uh, record it away as subcommittee members. And um, yeah, we just yeah. stayed. Hmm. Steve. Yeah. Uh, just a, a brief comment that the items that you mentioned from advocacy um, in the process and sort of what, what is the landscape of uh, history organizations and preservation advocacy, um, legal questions and possible changes to an ordinance or new ordinance, uh, and then intergovernmental coordination. Those are all aspects of a good preservation plan. So those are within the scope, things we'll be looking for the consultant to do. Um, and their recommendations in the plan um, will be based on what they hear from citizens, what they hear from us, what their own research, their own expertise. So. Um, I think the issues that you outlined are um, exactly the kinds of things that we're hoping to be talking about. And, and do you know how much they're going to be looking at um, uh, looking at 
what the other plans are that have been developed because like Carolyn Mish and I are quite at odds with each other because she is being very clear that she is not in favor of preserving old buildings in favor of you know new 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 houses and stretch codes um and so I'm wondering if that's part of their mandate is to look at the other plans that have been developed and you know how how historic preservation will fit in with those so that there's something more uh you know i guess more co coherent or whatever that that that, that is not just it, it, they're not i guess what i'm saying is like you can have sustainable buildings and you can also preserve old buildings but like people need to be talking to each other about how to do that i think you know for me so i used to work as a preservation planner and a, and a, a consultant on municipal plans and i think one of the things that comes with outside expertise is the ability to say here's best practice within preservation and preservation's coordination with zoning with um, density with sustainability with other issues which are important to the community so I think there's always going to be conflict and tension there right if you think about other goals and perspectives there's trade-offs but a good plan will bring um, expertise and examples from other communities about ways of thinking about meshing them together right um, so some of what you described as political work but the planning process is also an opportunity to, I think, bring those issues to the fore and say, okay, these are things that we should talk about as a community. And these are ways that other communities have dealt with those kinds of questions. Thanks. Thanks. I have a question. Uh, who decides on who the consultant is going to be? So that's already done, Jonathan, that oh, uh, we've, done. we've hired Barrett planning group. Did um, this so did that was the, a staff decision informed by this. Did this commission have any any say, formal or informal, on that? So this commission appointed the subcommittee to help the okay. department Got make it. those decisions, and that that was unanimous with everybody who looked at. Yeah, that. yeah, and Jonathan, we um, so it's it's Steve and myself and Barbara, and we um, all had an opportunity to. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah. And yeah. So. I, I wasn't prepared for this particular conversation. I think you were maybe not at the meeting when we talked about that, so that's fine. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. So we'll have more, um, we're meeting again on the 23rd of May, so we'll have more hopefully by then um, from Wayne and about a time frame and um, where we're going from here. So that's good. All right, anything else tonight? This is a short meeting. Steve. Um, I would like to meet in person, or at least bring up the topic of meeting in person again. Um, I think it's time, and I think something is lost in Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, the way the commission interacts with the public, the way we interact with each other. Um, some of the commission members I've never met in person before since I joined Likewise. them. Likewise, yeah. Um, I just think and I'm happy to do it outside. I'm happy to do it with a mask. I'm happy, you know, I just got my second booster. I'm, you know, whatever it takes. But I do think being in person would be really, it would be good for us and it would be good for the broader purposes, especially as we're kicking off this planning process. How do others feel about that? I, I'd like to meet, but with masks and out, I guess outside, maybe my age is talking. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think that's fair. And Craig, you're not going to be around, so um, we'd love to have you as long as possible. But um, so I'm flexible about that, but I do need to be careful. Um, I have a high risk family member that I have to protect. But um, yeah, so I think um, we used to meet for Jonathan and Steve because you weren't on the commission when we were meeting inside um, in the big conference room in City Hall, which is across the uh, hall from the planning office. And that is a pretty big room, um, big tables. So we could meet at a distance there. Uh, Sarah, I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know if that room's even available now, but that's where we used to meet. Would, yeah. would, I, child, would some place like Child's Park work? I don't know. That, that may be difficult, um, depending on weather and, 
and seating yeah. arrangements and other types of things. Um, the, I know city council is having a hybrid meeting format where people can watch live. We're, mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out how to do that for the rest of the boards and committees. Hopefully we will get there soon in a smooth fashion. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to maybe plan on one more Zoom meeting on May 23rd and then meet in person for the preservation plan kickoff? Yeah, I think we could do that. And we should probably also check, yeah, with Barbara, Dylan, and Harvey, all, you know, they have also may feel differently about it. But, but Steve, I appreciate you bringing that up because it has been a really long time. And it does feel somewhat impersonal, although it does allow people who attend who might not always be able to get to City Hall. So I'm, I'm, a, I admit I'm a bit wobbly about it, but okay. I don't want to stop progress. <laughs> so with a hybrid version, um, can a committee, can a committee member be on the, the monitor or is it only for people who are, you know, wanting to attend or are not on the commission? They should be able to. Uh, I don't know exactly where we are with implementing the technology. Okay. Um, but, but legally, that, that certainly is now. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so let's bring it up at the next meeting and we'll um, have a discussion about it. All right, great. Well, if there's nothing else, um, I will take, entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm happy to do that. Oh. <laughs> I'll second. Okay, mm. we can. Uh, I'll do a thumbs up to yes. And okay. Craig, that's a yes from you. I'm assuming. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. We'll have a good few weeks, and we'll see you on May 23rd. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.